It's hard today, but I think I think also music, the music industry's changed a massive amount that you don't need a record label as much as you used to do. Be prepared to put a lot of time and effort into it. <laughs> it's just it's, it's so cliched. I mean, nothing comes easy, I suppose, especially in the music world. Um, you do need to get out there. You need to connect with an audience. You need to hope that what you're doing get same excited, entertained and enthusiastic enough that they'll say, oh by the way, come to this gig next time they're playing and and really, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like word of mouth. I think there's been a big power shift in the way that one can promote a new band. At one time, got the band together, demoed, maybe found a radio station to play demos, or more likely put it through the whole process of having a small record release, maybe a bigger record release, and then the promotional activities of a record company came in to get the record played on the radio. I don't think that is singularly important in the way that it was before social media came in. Radio's quite a, a wide spectrum now really. So obviously if you were getting advertising in Radio 1 or Capital or one of the big ones it would make a massive difference. Um, a lot of bands nowadays are on kind of smaller more local radio stations and uh, they can be good but they're not perfect. Like every now and again it's good you'll get an email somebody's heard something on the radio and they're coming but in terms of who would turn up at our gigs you know, there'd maybe only be 5% heard about it on the radio and the rest has all been mainly Facebook or word of mouth, like folk that actually follow you and look at your website all the time. Well, I think at one time getting your records played on the radio was absolutely crucial. It was something that could make or break a record. Uh, also, there were records which got lots of airplay on radio and worked very well in that context, but became what was known as turntable hits, in that they were heard by the public but not bought in big enough numbers to make them chart entries. What has changed in recent times, of course, is the predominance of the internet. I think what we've seen now is it's still important to get airplay, but what constitutes airplay isn't necessarily a DJ playing it on the radio and the best example of that is surely Justin Bieber who was broken to a global market by being seen as a little boy with an extraordinary voice on YouTube and the stuff was was given away freely just to imprint this guy's voice on the consciousness and it, it did so very effectively. I suppose nowadays you've got old media and new media and really if you want to get your name out there as much as possible then you need to do something for all of them. Particularly when it comes to social media, like yeah I mean you can get yourself in front of someone else's social media reach just through careful consideration of like how you're collaborating and stuff like that and and yeah I mean there's, there's the opportunity for sort of exponential awareness of what you do in that respect. When I was in my first band, a long time ago, we didn't even have mobile phones for everyone. Oh, so promoting yeah. back then was quite hard. Mm -hmm. But if you can get a good following on Facebook and Twitter and things and announce yeah. things, you, you tend to find your events are busy. Because yeah. folks know who you are, mm -hmm. know your quality is good and get along. Yeah, so definitely social media has made a massive difference to mm -hmm. music in general, I think. really important for bands to get um, criticism, whether it's critical acclaim or whether it's people saying they're not very good. Um, but it does depend on who's who's doing the reviews um, and I think people are savvy enough to know whether there's that, that reviewer has any credibility or not and whether what they say should be taken on board. A good review if, there's a, if someone is constantly saying this is the best new band in the world, eventually people will realise that that's not the case. I mean, you only need to go and listen to the band to find out if that's not the case. But if there's somebody who knows their stuff um, and has enthusiasm and honesty and integrity in what they have to say, then 
not only do the bands benefit from that, but the journalists will benefit from that as well. I think it's more important for a review to be honest than for it to be good or bad. Too complex. Much too complex. Too complex. You want them putting in as much as you're putting in. Like you don't want it to just be like you constantly both the band constantly like putting in all their ideas and all their songs and like all the work and record label and aren't giving anything back. So you want like a good balance between the two. Just need to believe in what you're doing and just keep on keep on keeping on.